All right, folks, cryptocurrency under pressure again today. This follows last week that saw Bitcoin funds and products post record outflows. 141 million came out of Bitcoin, equal to 8.3% of what went in for the year. Now, conversely, Ether using the Ethereum blockchain actually saw inflows of 33 million, up to a billion dollars for the year. But here's the thing, just as crypto in general was gaining stronger acceptance with institutions, the trading bias has turned negative. I want to bring in Bullpit Capital Markets Chief Strategist Catherine Rivera. And Catherine, I was reading your, your latest letter to your investors, uh, and you suggested a small allocation to Bitcoin. So what do you make of this weakness? Maybe you're buying it at the right time. Yeah, I think it's a great time, Charles, to buy at these lows. Yes, we could break below 30,000. If we do, I think it's a good time to start accumulating positions in Bitcoin, which serves as a diversification factor, especially, uh, Charles, for the alternatives portion of one's portfolio. I particularly like Bitcoin um, because as if you are as I am, uh, expecting inflation to surge, not just this temporary bout that we're talking now, but over the 12 to 18 month horizon. If you think a crisis and confidence is coming with regard to fiat money, then you like Bitcoin. So I think it's a very good thing to have in someone's portfolio in that alternatives portion, which really everyone should have. Great stuff there. Hey, I know, of course, you're still advocating being invested in stocks, although the market has become somewhat indecisive, right? Uh, it's in a range here, major indices trying to figure out ways to break out. What do you think could break us out? I mean, we're right in the shadows of all time highs, but just can't get over the hump. Break us out to the upside or to the downside? I mean, I think we're probably more likely from here through year and going to see some form of downside. We'll make new highs for sure, Charles. But hey, if we see a higher corporate tax rate going to 25 or 28, we should expect earnings to fall back to earth or at least expectations of earnings growth to fall back to earth. If we get that scenario, I think we should we should continue to accumulate. But the fact is, is that until we have that, you know, that dire picture and the Fed has to hike rates, we have to be overweight equities. So remain, maintain your overweight right. equities, hedge the inflation bet with alternatives, with commodities, with Bitcoin, with the boring staple names that I always mention on your show. That's the way we need to be positioned for the uncertain future, which I think is going to, you know, is inherent in market of volatility for the next 12 sure. to 18 months. Catherine, I want to uh, lean on your expertise in Latin America and ask you about uh, just maybe a two-parter here. The rejection of left-wing politics, we see major elections in Mexico and Peru. Also, Vice President Harris, this trip, it looks like it's been really tough for the administration. I know the president of Guatemala said, hey, all of this stuff started when you guys sort of, when, when the Biden administration came in. Just in general, what's, what's happening south of the border for us? Well, we've seen a switch in the pendulum. So the pendulum is going from right-wing governments, which de facto were, you know, a big force in Latin America pre-pandemic, to kind of a swing to the left. The exception being, as you mentioned, in Mexico. On Sunday, we had uh, the president, uh, López Obrador, lose his supermajority in the Congress, which if you're a market participant and a, a free market economist, you think it's a great thing because we're going to see less um, less government state control over the energy sector. In Peru, you have the opposite. In Peru on Sunday, you had the left-wing Marxist roots a person, um, Pedro Castillo, very likely to take the presidency in the second round. So that bodes very poorly uh, for oh, select okay. countries in Latin America. Fujimora, uh, what happened? Yeah, Fujimori looked like she was going to pull it out there, but then overnight wow. the pendulum switched and it turned to Castillo, who has Marxist roots and has been talking about nationalizing the mining sector, which is 60% of Peru's exports, 10% yeah. of their GDP. Yeah. It's very dangerous for that economy, Charles. One of the great success stories in South America. I hate to see them mess that up. Catherine, thank you so much. Always appreciate it. Joining me now.